screen um, on some problems and you see some things that says to multiply. Well, Ava, just like you would do with numbers and polynomials, if it says multiply, you're going to want to try to multiply. All right. Now, there's nothing I could, I could look at this. Um, and to really add and subtract these, I'm going to have to get common denominators. And Kyle, when looking at this, I don't really see that it's going to be very fun to get common denominators. So I'm going to want to apply the operation first. Now, I do notice, though, these are the exact same terms, and these are the exact same terms, with one being positive, one being negative. So therefore, we can say it's a difference of two squares, meaning all I have to do is multiply my first two terms and multiply the last two terms, right? Because if you multiply the inner and the outers, you know they're going to um, add to 0. So by multiplying these, I have secant squared of theta minus tan squared of theta. All right, now here's my little tip that I kind of give to you guys. Whenever you see a trigonometric term <coughs> squared, always think of your Pythagorean identities. All right? Always think. It doesn't mean you're always going to be using them when you see them squared, but always look to be able to see would it make sense to be able to use them. Well, <coughs> thankfully for us, we know that secant and tangent are related to each other on the Pythagorean identities, right? So this would probably be a good time for me to be able to use those identities. So we go back to the Pythagorean identities, and I know that 1 plus tangent squared of theta equals secant squared of theta. Well, why don't I rewrite secant squared in for 1 plus tangent squared? Did everybody see what I did? Did I write that? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I can simply, I see these now subtract to 0, and I'm just left with 1. And now that's your simplified answer. OK? Anybody? Yes? 